Today, I will be sharing with you a simple trick to easily balance chemical equations by looking at five different problems. By the way, why do we balance chemical equations? The answer is not to score marks in exams, that is one thing, but the main reason is to follow the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Our first problem is hydrogen reacting with oxygen to form water. This is the unbalanced equation that we have. Step one is to count atoms on both sides. First of all, make a list of all the elements present in this equation. We have hydrogen, written as H, and oxygen, written as O. So, for both left and right sides, check how many atoms of each element are on both sides. On the left, we have one H2 molecule. That means two hydrogen atoms. We also have O2. That means two oxygen atoms. On the right, the small two after hydrogen means there are two hydrogens. The oxygen does not have any small number, so it means it is one oxygen. So the right side has two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now we start balancing. We are only allowed to change the big numbers in front of the atoms or molecules, called coefficients. We are not allowed to touch the small numbers that are the part of the chemical formula. Those tell us the identity of the compound. Now we have unbalanced oxygen. We have two oxygens on left and one on right side inside H2O. So to fix it, we will put two in front of H2O. This way, we now have two H2O molecules, and thus we have two times two or four hydrogen atoms and two times one or two oxygen atoms. Let us check hydrogen again. To make them equal, we will put two in front of H2 on the left. That means two times two equals four hydrogens. And that's it. Both sides match. This is the balanced equation. Let's move to our second problem. Nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to form ammonia. This is the unbalanced equation that we have. Let's count atoms. On the left, we have N2, which means two nitrogens. We also have H2, which means two hydrogens. On the right, we have NH3, which means we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. First, we will fix the unbalanced nitrogen. On the left, we have two nitrogens, but on the right, only one. So, we will put two in front of NH3. That gives two nitrogens and two times three or six hydrogens on the right. On the left, we have two hydrogen, but on the right, we now have hydrogen six. To fix this, we will put three in front of H2 on the left. That gives three times two equals six hydrogens. This way, both sides have the same number of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms, and this is the balanced equation. Now, let's level up our gear and do our third problem. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. This is the unbalanced equation. Let's first count atoms. On the left, we have one carbon, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. On the right, CO2 has one carbon and two oxygens. H2O has two hydrogens and one oxygen. So the right side in total has one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. Carbon is balanced. Now hydrogen is not balanced. On the left, there are four hydrogens, but on the right only two. To fix this, we will put two in front of H2O. Now the right side has four hydrogens, but again, calculate the number of oxygen atoms. It will be two from CO, two, and two from H2O. So we have four oxygen atoms, and thus oxygen is not balanced. To fix this, we will put two in front of O, two on the left. Now the left side has four oxygens, and this way both sides match. Let's look at a new type of problem where polyatomic ions are involved. The unbalanced equation is calcium sulfate plus sodium nitrate gives calcium nitrate plus sodium sulfate. Step one is to count atoms. But here, instead of splitting everything apart, we notice something important. On both sides of the equation, we have the same group SO4 and also the same group NO3. 
These groups are called polyatomic ions. They stay together like a team, so we can count them as one unit instead of breaking them into sulfur and oxygen or nitrogen and oxygen. This trick makes life easier. On the left, calcium sulfate has one calcium and one sulfate. Sodium nitrate has one sodium and one nitrate. On the right, calcium nitrate has one calcium and two nitrate groups. Sodium sulfate has two sodiums and one sulfate. Now compare both sides. Calcium is already balanced. The sulfate group is also balanced. But sodium and nitrates are not balanced. To fix them, we can put two in front of sodium nitrate on the left. That means now there are two sodiums and two nitrate groups on the left. This way, we have our balanced equation without even thinking of breaking down the polyatomic ions into separate atoms. Finally, let us solve a difficult problem in order to become a pro in balancing chemical equations. The unbalanced equation is carbon plus sulfur dioxide gives carbon disulfide plus carbon monoxide. You know the drill. Let us count atoms on both sides. On the left, we have a carbon with no small number attached to it. So that means one carbon atom. We also have sulfur dioxide. That means one sulfur and two oxygens. So left side totals are one carbon, one sulfur, and two oxygens. On the right, we have carbon disulfide, which is one carbon and two sulfurs, and carbon monoxide, which is one carbon and one oxygen. So the right side totals are two carbons, two sulfurs, and one oxygen. Now we start balancing. Remember the big rule. The small numbers or the subscripts that are part of a chemical name are part of the compound and cannot be changed. The only thing we may change are the big numbers written in front, called coefficients. Look at sulfur first because it is easy here. The right side has two sulfurs in carbon disulfide, while the left side has only one sulfur inside sulfur dioxide. To fix sulfur, we will put two in front of sulfur dioxide on the left. So the left side now has two sulfurs and two times two equals four oxygens. Next, let us fix oxygen. After our change, the left side has four oxygens but the right side has only one oxygen from carbon monoxide. To match oxygens, we will put four in front of carbon monoxide on the right. That means four times one oxygen equals four oxygens on the right. Now recount carbons and oxygens on the right. Carbon disulfide gives one carbon, and carbon monoxide with coefficient four gives four carbons. So the right side now has a total of one plus four equals five carbons, two sulfurs, and four oxygens. The right side has five carbons, while the left side currently has only one carbon. To fix that, we will put five in front of carbon on the left. After this change, we now have five carbons on the left side, and that's it. This way, we now have a balanced equation. Also, we only changed coefficients not subscripts, so the chemical identities stayed correct. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!